I'm hoping my camera is going to be kind to me today and pretend it can't see the giant bags under my eyes. Hey guys, it is Vlogstis Day something that came after the number that was yesterday. No idea what day it is, but it is gloomy. There's a bit of blue sky and then predominantly grey sky. No rain so far. So hopefully it's gonna stay clear. Oh, there's a tiny, tiny tortoise shell kitten on the road. Oh, hi, you're so tiny. You can't see me. I don't know why I'm trying to talk to you. Yesterday I decided not to do a full day's vlog. I just wasn't feeling it. I was so, so tired yesterday. I've had very little sleep over the last couple of weeks. As you may have been able to tell by my lack of energy in the last couple of videos. I'm still not feeling fantastic, but I'm getting a little more sleep every night. So hopefully things will start to improve soon. Anyway, I got a little bit of footage yesterday. I'm gonna slam that in at the beginning of this video. We're gonna call it a double vlog just because reasons. And I will see you guys back here in a few minutes with today's vlog. Well, it's a good thing the bins were emptied last night. <laughs> a huge storm has just come in and it, it's taken them. It wants them for itself. And there's a tumbleweed. Yes. Look at this little cutie bean trying to escape. Hey, get back in there, you. I'm giving her cage a little tidy up and topping her up on snuggly bedding because right now that is all she has. So this is my, my new pile of tissue. It is starting to get a little chilly at the moment. She's starting to feel it. I think this is why she's been staying in bed a little longer because she's feeling a bit cold. So I'm gonna try and fix that. If you don't feel cozy just looking at this glorious thing, but you're just wrong. Fix your feelings. This is cozy AF. Look at it. Got a selection of toys on my right and on my left and I'm gonna figure out how to pop them back in. I'm actually gonna be giving Osmium the, what's this thing called again? Flying saucer, that's it. Uh, unfortunately, Zinc didn't end up using it. He just ignored it and then eventually buried it underground. So uh, I'm gonna give it to Ozzy and see what she thinks. I'm also gonna be making a small effort to turn this into some kind of winter cage. That's not a good idea to put that near the wheel. So I'm gonna make an effort at turning this into some kind of winter cage because I wanted to do that last year and didn't get the chance to and the reality is Osmium is now uh, 16 months old I believe which means she's probably not going to have another winter with us so taking the opportunity while I still can. This is the most adorable snowman bowl ever. These are what I use as sand baths. I can't remember where I got this. I think it must be jumbo. It seems like a jumbo item. These are supposed to be for putting sweets in, but they make brilliant sand baths. Got the adorable little chew tree. I think I got that from a local shop. That in there. We have a blue pencil chew which is stuffed with herbs and other lovely things. A little tea light holder that can be used as a hideaway. The wooden train house I built for her last solstice. I love this so much and so does she. This always becomes either her hoard or her nest. I don't think this has been excluded from her setups since I first made it and gave it to her. We have the adorable snowman food dish which is actually supposed to be an ashtray. Jumbo sells loads of novelty ashtrays and I just keep collecting them to use as food dishes. Got a blue drinking glass again, another hideaway and I'm going to really bury that in there. Well, an attempt was made. <laughs> Actual cage seams take so much longer than just a few minutes to throw together and make look decent so it's not too bad for something I just cobbled together in 10 minutes. Hello, my smallest princess. You awake? Did I disturb you? I'm sorry, I was making your place look pretty. Look, you got two sand baths. How freaking lucky are you, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you don't care, you just want all the bedding. So, let's go for a mini and super fast cage tour, starting with the log house over here. We also have her mini water bottle. There's a rock underneath it, that's simply to stop her trying to bury the water bottle. She always does that. Uh, she has her food dish over here, a little snowman ashtray. She's got a couple of bits of driftwood for climbing in and hiding under. We have a couple of PVC pipes over here as tunnels. There's also another one over by her nest. Hello, tiny. We have a sand bath in the shape of a snowman. Man. We have a tea light holder which has a hole in the back so she can go and hide in there and live in a real house covered in snow with a real snowman. She has an edible wooden tree as if trees are not made of wood already. She has another sand bath which is just in a blue cereal dish. She's got her train that I built for her, another tea light holder hideaway, there is a glass cup hidden underneath there for her to hide in, and she has the flying saucer wheel. There's a super fast cage tour with limited details, but you get the gist of what's going on. Oh, she is so cute. How can you be so adorable? How can you be so tiny? 
I weighed her again the other day and she is still a teeny teeny tiny 28 grams. That is the size of a Roborowski. Winter Whites are supposed to be so much bigger than that and she is the tiniest Winter White I've ever had. I've even had Robos larger than her. She is really, really diddy, but so, so cute. Also, I think, I think she might be turning white again. I'm not sure. I feel like the patches behind her ears are looking whiter, but I can't be certain. And I think she's getting flecks of white on her grey coat. I don't know. But last year I couldn't tell until she was really, really starting to change either. So we'll wait and see, but it might be happening again. Look at him. He's such a good boy. All right. All right. I'm coming. Okay. <laughs> Bo. <laughs> Go on, John, get it. Get it. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> she bit me on the bum. Internet help desk. We're starting today off in the rodent room and by starting today I mean it's already half past three in the afternoon and I'm ready to go to bed. My mum will be arriving in about half an hour to pick up Juno which I'll be honest I'm very grateful about because walking three dogs at the same time is my new least favourite thing. It's going to be nice to have four less legs in this house as lovely as Juno is, as sweet as she is, as nice as it's been to have her around. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for fewer animals again. I've got some things to do with the animals' toys. I've got to fix Rodney's piggle wig because if you watch my Instagram stories, uh, you'll know that he managed to rip the leg off it the other week and I haven't been able to fix it yet. And he's been really sad because he loves that piggy so much. So I'm gonna fix that today. I'm also gonna fix Zinc's new hammock and give it a wash so that I can pop it in his cage. I'm also going to uh, wash all the other hammocks. I forgot to do it the other day, kicking myself because it should have been done. So I've got to get that done today. I also need to add a lot more bedding to iodine's cage and to zinc's cage because as i've mentioned before it's starting to get cold i'm not exactly sure what the temperature is today we shall take a look at the thermometers uh this one's saying 21 let's see what the one down here is saying slightly different temperatures in the room this one's saying 19 all right so 19 to 21 degrees. It's not concerningly low right now. It's not until about January, February time when it gets to 10, 11 degrees that I really have to be vigilant about them. Um, but it is dropping. They are noticing it. I'm noticing that they are hoarding a lot more. At least the hamsters are. They're hoarding a lot more. Uh, they're sleeping for longer. They are trying to find more nesting materials. So that is a sign that it's time to warm up the cages. So for Eileen, I'm just gonna throw in a bunch How did that get there? Her treat mailbox is supposed to be down by her house, which is right in that back corner. She has somehow managed to carry this up onto the shelf. Like, she's an old lady. She's wobbly on her feet. How did she do that? Okay, then anyway, as I was saying, um, for iodine, I'm just going to fill her cage with all the leftover leaves that I had from her autumn cage tour. So all this is just my homemade paper bedding made from colored kitchen tissue. Um, and I have a ton of it left, well, not a ton of it, but I have quite a bit of it left, enough to give her some more bedding to play around with. I'm going to pull most of it around by there, because that's where her nest is, so she'll have the freedom to build up a bigger, warmer nest. Okay, so I've got a bag and a half of yellow, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six bags of red. Princess, I can see you watching me. Uh, bedding! Woo. Oh, we also have one bag of orange. Oh, okay. We actually have five bags of red and a bag of orange. So, she's gonna start digging it into her bed now. Oh, she's so happy. <laughs> this is a really nice colour red. I'm gonna make bedding this colour again. Because it's so pretty. Look at all that, sweetheart. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit mental, isn't it? Warm, but mental. <laughs> Where'd you go? 
finish stuff there as well. Finish it off with a bit of yellow. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. I really, really have to do a rainbow cage for you at some point. I hope I get a chance to. That would look really cute, especially with your little rainbow bridge. So here we have a very dirty and very damaged piggy. Look at him, he's got a big hole in him. I do also have the leg that he lost, however I'm not going to be fixing this back on simply because Rodney has nearly pulled this off multiple times and I am worried that the next time he tries to pull it off he will end up choking on it. So we're getting rid of that and I'm just going to sew him up and he will be a three-legged piggly wig. <laughs> was a success. The surgery went well and Mr. Piggy has pulled through, although the scarring will be permanent. Also, he smells like butt. He needs to go through the washing machine. Now we need to fix the burger monstrosity, which is just, it, it's, I mean, look at the stitch work on that. Isn't it beautiful? Glorious, magnificent, totally worth the two euros. I've already removed the chain. If you didn't see what this looked like before, the chain was originally attached to the back of the burger. So if you were to hang it in the cage, it would hang with the door facing downwards. Not all that practical. So I will be re-sewing the chain to the top of the burger so that zinc can actually use it. There we go, it's fixed and it works properly now. Yay! I feel like this shouldn't be the consumer's job, but it is for some reason. So, yeah. I came in here to collect Zinc's hammocks while he's asleep, and I noticed that Disappointment's tongue seems to be missing. I don't, I don't know where he's taken it, but it's not in his mouth. What terrifying medieval punishment system does he have? I found his tongue. It was just thrown out in the corner. Not being used for anything. He didn't even take it to nest with. He didn't have a reason for taking it out. He just took it because he could. The guy is a literal savage. Got me a little delicates bag to put all my things in. This just stops it messing up the inside of your machine. Do, 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 do. Also stops any little pieces that come off, i.e. disappointment tongues, from going missing. <laughs> Still able to clean your butthole, huh? That's a talent. Oh, you just licked my hand. You, you just, you licked my- ah! Zinc's cage needs its usual tidy up before I add in embedding. Uh, he has stuff all over the place. Got a nice little river of tissue to start nesting with and the last thing I'm going to do is add in more of my homemade bedding just so he has even more lovely, comfortable stuff to keep him warm. There we are, that should hopefully keep him a happy and warm little mouse, even if it does look a little bit ugly. I'm, I'm glad to finally be getting rid of this stuff though. Not sure what I was thinking when I made this particular combination of colours. In the meantime, his hammocks are drying on the line, so I'll pop those back in tomorrow. But he's not sleeping in them right now, he is sleeping in the hay box at the back. So I'm not worried, I don't think he's going to really miss them overnight. Wonderfully curious little things. Now let's just all appreciate the terrible, terrible lighting. I really need to get myself some new equipment next year. I want a new camera and some proper lighting because I've been using IKEA lights for far too long. Right, it's time to A some cues. So we're gonna go through the question thread and I'm gonna randomly pick out a couple. Actually, 
First one, not random, I've just gone right to the very bottom. The most recent question asked. This is from Grace P and she asks, what size collar do you recommend for a long haired cat? Example, a Siberian forest cat. The breed of the cat is not really what's relevant when it comes to measuring collars. It is more just the size of the individual because of course some cats, regardless of breed, can be very small, some can be very large. Somewhere around here I have, ooh, an example, hold on. Where is my tape measure? Hello, tape measure. Where are you? Found it! I also found the box of nerds my mum brought me back from the UK. Oh. Okay, so to measure out a collar, you're gonna need a soft tape measure like this. And you quite simply place two fingers on the back of your cat's neck. You measure around their neck and over the top of your two fingers. So around their neck and on top of your two fingers, that should give you a good size measurement so you know what size collar to get them. The reason you do the two fingers thing, it's just a general rule with pet collars. You should always be able to put two fingers underneath their collar. That just ensures that it's not too tight, it's not gonna choke them, it's not gonna be uncomfortable. It's also important when you're choosing a cat collar that you make sure it's a safety collar. So either it has a breakaway latch on it or it is elasticated. Breakaway latches look like this. It's just a little plastic clip. And if I just give this a little pull it just comes undone and that ensures that if the cat gets caught in anything that's just going to pull apart and they're not going to end up getting choked the other type of safety color that's really easy to find is the one with elastic you can see just there that's the bit of elastic and these ones if the cat does get caught they can pull their head back and this will stretch up over their ears and they'll be able to reverse out of it so even if they get caught on something high up, if they're in a tree, um, they should be able to quite easily slip back out of it. But that's also why the two finger rule is important, because if you can fit two fingers under there, they should more easily be able to pull it over their head if they do get caught. Basic cat collar safety, it's really, really, really important that you make sure your cat's collars are safe, that they can get out of them if they have to, because cats can end up in all sorts of places, especially if your cat is one that has access outside. At some point, they're probably gonna lose their collar because they're gonna get caught on something. And every time they lose their collar, just remember, that is a time they got stuck, that is a time they could have been seriously hurt, and thank goodness they had a safety collar so they could get out of that situation. Lila or Leela Stafford, sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce your first name, asks, do you have a car? No, we do not. Um, I, I technically can drive. I took my driving lessons when I was old enough to, so when I was 18. Um, unfortunately though, I, Basically due to some trauma I've had in cars in my childhood, as well as a couple of years ago actually getting hit by a car, which was fun. I actually don't have a great relationship with cars and I'm very, very jittery in them. And when I was doing my driving lessons, I was fine. Right up until the point where there were other cars on the road, <laughs> which obviously is not great. I get very nervous just being the passenger in cars and I was told by many people, once you start driving, you won't be as nervous. No, it was worse. I nearly crashed so many times well into my driving lesson. Like I could drive the car, I'd driven it around plenty of quiet places. The instructor was like, yeah, you are ready to go into the cities and drive. We're gonna do it. I was like close to my exam and everything. And uh, as soon as I started driving with other cars, it was like near accident after near accident. Obviously, I hope that at some point in my future, I'll be able to get past that trauma and get over the anxiety that I have from just being inside a car or being near moving cars. But right now I just can't be a safe and responsible driver. So. I'm not one as much as I hate that and I would love to have my own car again and be able to you know, drive around and, and go places wherever I want to go, um, but I don't, so I can't. So I take the bus most places. And the reason Dan doesn't drive is just simply because he hasn't had any time to do any lessons. He's been saying for years and years about doing his lessons. I think since since he turned 18, he was like, yeah, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do my lessons, we're gonna get a car, it's gonna be good. It hasn't happened yet because it just has not been the time for it and the rare occasion where there have been the time there hasn't been the money for it so uh it's, it's just not happened but that's not a big issue because thankfully we do live within busing distance to most places and within walking distance to others so we manage we make it work uh, it definitely would be a lot more convenient if we had a car but it's not a huge issue right now. So many of these questions are about rats. How many times? I'm gonna have to actually make a designated video on rats. Although, although, if I, if I make a video just talking about that, it's not gonna change anything because there's loads of questions on here about guinea pigs too. And we all know, I made a whole video on the guinea pig thing. Like I'm not ever having guinea pigs. I was like, I'm gonna make this video and no one will ever ask me again. 
everyone asks me, like every single week I get that question. For those who don't know the rat situation, I have wanted rats for so many years that I've actually lost count at this point. I think the last time I counted it was about six years that I've wanted rats. I don't know. It's been a long time. Um, I have researched so much into their care, although I definitely would need to re-research before getting them. The only reason I don't have them is because first of all, uh, the, the first time when I wanted them, I just didn't have the space, I didn't have the time, I, it wasn't practical for me to have them. And then, when it got to the point where I could have some, um, I was back home in Cyprus by that point, because when I first wanted them, it was while I was studying in the UK, came back to Cyprus and realised that rats are incredibly hard to find here. There's generally not a wide selection of rodents on this island, it's why I have not had Roborovskis or Chinese hamsters since I came back to Cyprus, because can't find them, we only have Syrians, uh, winter whites, Campbells, obviously hybridized winter whites and Campbells, and mice. Those are the those are the things we can find, which for somebody who loves rodents, it's um it's not great. <laughs> I am once again at a point in my life where I don't actually have the space for rats, so it's not a huge issue. Um, but the main reason I don't have them now is because they are just really, really, really hard to find, but I do want them. They are top of my list for animals that I want to have because they've been there forever and I must get some at some point. What are you up to? There was a huge pile of bedding in front of your wheel. It all seems to be in the tree stump now. She's doing a good job at making a nest. It's that time once again to say goodnight. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Vlogsis. Hope you guys will come back for another episode tomorrow and I will see you all then. Bye-bye.